the McLaren Speedtail, a true halo car. 250 miles an hour, 1,036 horsepower. But this specific one isn't all that it seems. If you've ever collected model cars or even have the slightest of passions for them, you're gonna like this place. We're at Amalgam Collection in Bristol and they produce creations like this. I collect models of my favourite cars, and as I've gotten older and started working, I've slowly upped the game to some pretty damn nice models. But these are on another level. This car here is the result of more than 4,000 hours of craftsmanship, going into details that you will never see other than in cars that actually work and run. In terms of car models, these guys are at the top, but it comes at a cost. The models that Amalgam produces start at around £700, that's for their 1 to 18 scale models, but this is their bread and butter, the much larger 1 to 8 scale cars. Now they've given me these fancy museum curator gloves and a nice fancy brush so that we can check this out. So yes, a Ferrari 156 we've got here, Formula 1 car, just get rid of some dust and fingerprints before we very carefully open it up. I'm just going to stand up for this. Very, very delicate. Off it comes to expose that tiny little V6 engine. And the details are unbelievable. Even the drilled holes into the brake discs, every little tooth at the back, the suspension, the brake pipes, the throttle linkage. God, it's just fascinating. And then if we open up the front here, very carefully prise it off. Look at the detail in the front of there. Every single rivet, which I don't know personally, but I can guarantee they've looked at the pictures, if not the real car, and got those rivets exactly right. So, their 1 to 8 scale cars start at around £7,000. This Ferrari 156 comes in at roughly £12,000. And then the McLaren Speedtail just next to me here takes it up to more like £18,000. Now, that is roughly the same price as the V10 500 horsepower daily driver that I'm looking to buy. So, they're fantastic looking and the detail's incredible, but how can a model car cost that amount of money? Chris, thank you for having us. I think you have one of the greatest jobs in the world. How does a model go from start to finish in this workshop? So the first, first area for us is data, always. Okay. Um, so obviously it's easier in the case of a modern vehicle because the manufacturers will provide us with the data from their CAD. In the case of historic vehicles or in, indeed aircraft, we scan. So we've got various methods of digitally scanning millions of points of data and we can bring all of that into CAD systems and edit that down to model form. And then we can start to produce the full detailed model and break it down into a number of parts so that we can start to work out how we're gonna make the model and how we're gonna put all those pieces together at a, a smaller scale than the original. And do those parts exactly replicate the parts breakdown of a real car? Or are there certain things in the model that come as holes rather than split up? We don't have as many numerous parts as the real thing. Obviously that's engineered to do 200 odd miles an hour and sure. we're, we're producing a, a representation of that. So um, what we can do is, as you can see here, we can join certain parts together and make a, a greater whole so that it's got more structural integrity when we scale it down to the, the size of a model. This is, this is the bare shell that's molded in uh, PU resin and then we can hang parts off of that and start to 
really bring the detail in. You can see these detailed parts here that are, are added into the model as we progress it and build it. In terms of getting it from that sort of bare resin model to a finished painted one like this, is it more like painting full-scale cars considering the scale of the model or is it more like painting a model? It's the same system as painting a full-size car, only the facility is smaller. So the spray shop is catered for this size of model or slightly larger when we do the quarter scale models. The systems are all the same, the paints are all exactly the same. So it's it's automotive refinishing systems that we we use automotive paints as well. And time-wise, going from your bare shell to then this finished model, what's the time scale there? It depends on the level of detail, obviously. Some of these models have much more detail working doors, some don't. On average, and something like this would probably be a month to six weeks. And then in terms of the materials of the cars, are they the exact same as the real thing? Or do you have to sort of pick and choose what goes on? We do, so models? yeah, so Sometimes some materials lend themselves really nicely to being reduced down to scale. So metals in particular are quite good. But we can look at this model over here and you'll see. So a good example of scale material is carbon fibre. So when it's used in production for the real thing, it's a woven material. So you've yeah. got woven strand. So when you want to reduce that down, the material doesn't exist at this scale. So what we do is we produce an artwork that's very carefully designed to represent the weave of carbon. So it sort of gives the illusion of a woven material. And yeah, it looks, uh, slight texture to it. Exactly, well. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it looks exactly like the real, the real thing at scale. And then you have models that fully open up like this, but also some that are just, I guess, static. Yeah. Um, how much more difficult is it to make a model that fully opens up like this compared yeah, to a static one? Quite, quite a bit more, because there's, there's more structure involved in the model. So um, it's got to support the hinges and the weight of the door on the hinges. All of the features have got to be very carefully considered. And obviously you see more as well. I mean, if you've got a fixed engine cover, you don't necessarily yeah. see the full detail of the Look engine. Those intercoolers can, in there. Yeah, right. yeah, so you can see on this one that it's uh, it's a higher level of detail than if the engine were fixed shut. Generally, do customers want this level of accessibility? If they could, everybody would want this level of, of detail. Obviously, the, there's a slight difference in price when you're um, going for the higher level, so that's uh, that's something to consider. It's something I'd want anyway. If it, were, if it were me, I'd want the highest level of detail possible. There's so many fascinating models in here, but I have to ask a bit of a crass question. Which is the most valuable model car in the workshop? That's a McLaren M8 over okay. here. This is a beautiful model, but what makes it more special than anything else in here? Well, let's have a closer look at it first of all. I'll just Use your reveal it, hold, hold my breath. Wow, what a piece of kit. So this is an amalgam model that any of our customers can buy, but in this one in particular has been detailed for a, for a client to represent a particular chassis at a particular race. So some of the details vary slightly. Little race, race details, decals, there's some detailing on the dash that's been changed and uh, the position of fire bottle, that sort of thing. That's what adds to the value of this one. And can I ask what the value of this car is? Well, this one is a five figure sum, upwards of, of 20,000 pounds. Wow. So I'm seeing also on this table over here, people can weather the cars the way they want, and as you've mentioned, stickers. What if a customer wants a completely bespoke car? So a model that you've never templated or modeled, scanned before. I'm guessing that's a hell of a lot even more work than this model here. Yeah, for sure. It's, it, it's the economy of scale, isn't it? It's just a one-off. We do it, for sure. Um, but uh, the, the cost involved in that would probably start at 50 and may go up to 150,000 pounds. And looking around the room, I mean, these, these models are fantastic. These are what, sorry, what scale are these? One, this is two, one eighth scale. One eighth. And these are massive compared to what most people would collect, one to 18 being the kind of standard. But looking around me, this template here, I want to say a template, what, what exactly is this? It's clearly a Merc F1 car, but yep. what stage of build is this? The reason we've got this one is to mock up position of graphics and all of the sponsor decals. And then you can see over here, we've got that shown as the uh, the production run comes together. So these are the 
these are the actual models. These are enormous. What scale are these? These are a quarter scale. Right, and in my mind, the larger you go with your scale, the easier they are to work on because it's less fiddly. Is that the case? To some extent, that's true, yes. But of course, as the, the model increases in size, it gives us more opportunity to add more detail. So that tends to be what happens with, uh, with these models. So you'll have seen with the steering wheels, the buttons are indicated and the, the readout on the, on the steering wheel display. So although in theory, yeah, as it gets bigger, it's a little bit easier to deal with. You don't need the tweezers quite so much. We still like to add as much detail as we can fit in. And speaking of detail, I mean, look at, at these under trays. It's amazing the amount of fins that make them up. Are Merc F1 giving you this information? Because I imagine some of these fins are pretty NDA'd, you know, and are yeah. worth quite a lot to other racing teams. What's the situation in terms of getting that IP? Well, the answer is yes, we do get that data. And I mean, I'm sure that it some of the more confidential detail will have been edited out at the Mercedes end of the process before the data is issued to us. Right. But essentially, yeah, they're, they're an accurate replica of exactly the, the chassis that we're, we're replicating. Yeah. And you don't just do cars. I'm seeing over here there's a pretty special Spitfire over there. I guess when people think models, they might immediately think Airfix and the predominant model there is a plane. So you do stretch outside of cars as well. Absolutely, yep. This year especially we've got a number of projects in the pipeline that are aviation based. So we've got an SR71 coming up, um, the Blackbird, uh, so that's going to be uh, 140th scale, so we're talking about over a metre long. Okay, well seeing these models, it's, it seems far too easy to think that, oh well, why can't you just make one of my car? So I own a, a Mondeo ST200 and I've never come across a very good model of exactly that car. So if I was to come to you and say, right, Amalgam Models, build me a Mondeo, would you do it? Absolutely, yeah, for sure. We'd consider anything. But um, the question then, it raises the question of economy. You know, if, you've, if you're shelling out to get a model made, do you really want to do that or do you want to go for the real thing? It's, uh, that's well, that's the question. You, I mean, you won't have a Mondeo mould, will you? So that then goes into the, bespoke. the 50 to 150 grand. So you, my, my, my Mondeo was worth 900 quid. Yeah, so then spending yeah. 50 grand on a model of it. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of development work. For that one-off, it would be a, a long project. So, uh, okay. but, it, but anything's possible. Chris, thank you so much for showing us around. It's been fascinating and well, I'm moving to this area of the country soon, so I'll almost definitely be back. See you again. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I've always been fascinated by models of pretty much anything since I was a kid. I think it's because they become compact, more visually digestible than the full thing. You can immediately pick up on all the details within your field of view, digest them fully, and the human brain is known to be attracted to objects that give as much information out as possible. Just one swipe of my eyes across this Mansell Ferrari and I can pretty much take in every single tiny detail and it's absolutely beautiful. The question is though, if you were to commission a 1 to 8 scale model of this detail, what would it be? Would it be the car you own now, or maybe your first car, or whatever your dream car is? Tell me in the comments below. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe. <laughs>